seven o'clock and we have a quorum so i'm going to call this meeting to order and the four, first item on the agenda as always is uh, citizens concerns anybody who has any issues uh, to address that are not on our agenda for tonight please approach the microphone i would add because we've had some recent citizens concerns that have gone on a bit long that it's really an opportunity for citizens to raise concerns and for uh, the board and the town manager to typically address them offline so not a lot of back and forth citizens concerns okay uh, the next item is chairman's update and uh, where's my <clears throat> maybe I'm not going to give my chairman's update okay okay first of all we had a really nice Memorial Day observance uh, on Monday the 30th it was rainy and we did not allow rain to deter us uh, from our appointed rounds a uh, very moving event as always uh, Peter Berry our chairman who by the way I have not deposed he is on vacation so he will be back at the next meeting chairing but Peter Berry Franny Osman who is not here right now and I were there uh, and everybody turned out ready for the rain and by the end of the ceremonies uh, the skies were clearing uh, Mr. Berry did read the names of veterans who enact and who have died in the past year and that is always very moving uh, there was one veteran whose who credentials his affiliations I remember I don't remember his name but he had actually served in World War II Korea Vietnam and Lebanon um, the Acton Boxborough Regional High School graduation was on Friday the 3rd it was perfect weather uh, and Franny Osmond and I were there as was my husband uh, my husband and I aren't parents but we have been attending the event every year since 2010 uh, it's really exciting and poignant to see the newest graduates prepare for the next phase of their lives there is a planning board hearing on uh, tomorrow at 8 o'clock uh, about proposed public shade tree removal on high street in connection with proposed sidewalk installation uh, uh, sidewalk committee has done extensive evaluation of, of the sidewalk needs on high street and uh, the sidewalk will improve pedestrian safety uh, and I think if you have any interest in sidewalk issues there or you should go to that meeting uh, the League of Women Voters for the Acton area are having their annual meeting also tomorrow at Bella Familia uh, this coming Sunday there's a celebration and commemoration of a hundred years of Boy Scouting in Acton uh, at NARA uh, Acton and Boxborough currently and for in recent years have had three troops number one 32 and 284 uh, Mr. Barry our chairman will offer opening remarks and uh, Senator Eldridge also will speak there will be a four-part presentation of the century-long history a skit by the scouts and some sort of time capsule event um, and I probably will be there uh, next item there will be a screening of a 2009 documentary called shooting beauty uh, next Monday uh, June 13th 6 30 at the Maynard Fine Arts Theater on 19 Summer, Summer Street in Maynard. It is for ages nine and up. Uh, there's a $5 uh, charge. It is a project of the Girl Scout Troop 75086, whose members participated in a very memorable mock Board of Selectmen meeting a few months back. This is their final take action project before they disband, but the film provides a powerful look at how we ind see individuals and how we define beauty. It is basically a documentary covering um, the experience of the filmmaker um, at the United Cerebral Palsy School in Watertown, Massachusetts. Um, she has started a program called 100 Cameras Photography uh, workshop which uh, places modified camera systems into the hands of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and the troop will before the film have a, a short skit and then there will be a discussion after the film and any funds raised above the cost of the theater rental will go to the 100 cameras project um, Acton Boxborough United Way will have their annual meeting on Tuesday June 14th 7 o'clock at the West Acton Village Works Gallery and finally I just wanted to provide an update about the proposed uh, train station parking fee increases the South Acton train station advisory committee has been publicizing uh, the changes they heard, had heard public output at their most recent meeting on May 26 
um, and they ultimately voted to reaffirm their prior recommendation of the increases. Um, this board, it could possibly be discussing those increases um, at our next meeting on June 20th. Uh, we have uh, received some comments from uh, some residents and users, but for further information about the proposed fee increases, you should visit the town website, which has a new posting uh, with the SATSAC recommendation as well as the proposed uh, fee schedule. And that is all I have, Mr. Manager. Thank you. Um, first of all, last Wednesday we had a uh, 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 a call with Standard & Poor's uh, as we are getting ready to uh, uh, put out to bid the bonds for bond for uh, uh, Wright Hill as well as some of the uh, equipment that was approved at town meeting back in April and at our next meeting uh, the board hopefully will be awarding uh, the bid uh, the bid bond or the bond bid excuse me uh, for those projects uh, so usually with calls like Standard & Poor's they talk about the town finances I think it went pretty well I don't think there's any reason uh, be concerned that we would lose our AAA rating they will uh, be giving us a draft of their recommendations I believe this Wednesday and we've got uh, just a few hours to comment on them before it goes to the uh, the board at Standard & Poor's that would uh, uh, deal with the, deal with the uh, bond rating so um, keep our fingers crossed but I, I felt pretty good based on the call we had the other day um, I, I think I reported the last meeting that the special legislation that enables us to acquire the Harris Street property uh, has been signed by the governor and now it's just a matter of coordinating a closing date with with the Commonwealth which is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world um, and about a year ago and I can't remember I reported this to the board or not um, uh, uh, a movie production team uh, was looking around town uh, looking for some film sites and they really like the office the old office of fisheries and wildlife it's uh, a movie super trooper 2 if and if you saw super trooper it's about a it's a comedy about uh, Vermont State Police and they, they like the way that looks at, as, as a, uh, a police station for their super trooper 2 movie so we're in this awkward situation where they don't know who to talk to because technically the state will own the building we're going to acquire it hopefully in the not too distant future and uh, so we're trying to set up a, a meeting with DCAM to figure out how we're going to proceed they, they, they need about maybe three weeks of, of shooting on site and it wouldn't really interfere with anything we're doing at, at the moment so it'd be, be kind of neat and we'd get some fee out of it as well but we're still struggling with who's got the jurisdiction so uh, there'll be more on that uh, as we move forward um, also I received a, a phone call uh, from an organization called the William Noyes Webster Foundation uh, that basically is a foundation that promotes medicinal marijuana and they want to uh, come in and talk to me about a potential site in Acton similar to the other company that came to us was it last year or year before I don't even remember um, so they're coming in a week from tomorrow to talk to me and uh, uh, that issue could very well be in front of the board uh, at a future meeting and that's my report thank you mr. manager um, we have a 710 hearing I think I see mr. Dimacrakos and mr. Bertolami if you want to set up um, what I'm going to do is try to get through the consent agenda um, before 710 I, I never know which clock is accurate but anyhow so consent agenda RHSO, which is Regional Housing Service Organization, Intermunicipal Agreement Amendment. And if you have, if you want me to hold, hold. Number six, Eagle Scout Court of Honor, Benjamin Kevin Watcut, June 24, 2016. Um, Lisa, do we know who's taking that? Who's who? Oh, okay. Well, it, it's not pressing. It's still it, we have time, I guess. Okay, number seven, Board of Selectmen to accept Conant Street land acquisition gift. This is the, the acquisition that was appro approved at town meeting. Number eight, accept gift recreation department. Selectmen to accept gift of $407 from Max Stout 
from an Eagle Scout project fundraiser for the relocation and restoration of a bench at Nara Park. Number nine, committee appointment, Christina W. Richlick, Capital Improvement Planning Committee, Acton Boxborough Regional School Committee Representative for Acton. Number 10, committee appointment, Steve Noon, Capital Improvement Planning Committee, FinCom Representative. Number 11, committee appointment, Mike Majors, 348 to 364 Main Street Master Plan Special Committee, FinCom Rep. Number 12, committee appointment, Patricia McKnight, 348 to 362 Main Street Master Plan Special Committee, Act in 2020 Representative. Number 13, one day alcoholic beverage, Maureen Mousseau, I'm sorry if I mispronounce that, Nara Park, July 16, 2016. Okay, you hold that, okay. Number 14, one day alcoholic beverage, Eileen Suliotis, Nara Park, June 25, 2016. Uh, number 15, request to dispose of obsolete items, Acton Memorial Library. You held number 13, Franny? I was just wondering, I, there was something about the um, police thinking they needed a detail because there were so many people, and I didn't see how that was, re was it resolved with them getting a detail, or? I wonder if we can give them a license. Well, this is July 16th. We could, we could hold off approving it until we could until give we clear it that contingent up. on them resolving yeah. that with the police, you know. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, there's enough time because they're not doing their event until July 16th. So, I mean, why don't we just uh, pull it and then, yes. and then just approve all the other items? But I don't mind not looking at it again if we want to do it just contingent, as long as they um, work it out with the police. Okay, that's fine. Do you want to move? Uh, make a motion. Should I move um, that we? Give the one day alcoholic beverage to Maureen Musso, Nara Park, July 16, 2016, contingent on them having the conversation with the police department and if the police um, require a police detail, that they get one. Second. Uh, is there a second? Is there a second? Yeah, I second. Oh, you second? I can't hear. Okay. Sorry, second. Okay, any further tonight. discussion of, of that item? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Now, do I have a motion for the rest of the items in the consent agenda? I move to approve consent agenda items 5 through 12 and 14 through 15. Second. Okay, we have, we want to have a face off. Um, <laughs> okay, either, either Ching Sung or Franny uh, uh, seconded. So anyhow, any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining. Thank you. Now. To the hearing. Um, the Acton Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on June 6, 2016, at 7:10 p.m. in the Francis Faulkner Hearing Room 204 at the Town Hall, 472 Main Street, Acton, on the application of Country Properties LLC for a site plan special permit under Zoning Bylaw Sections 10.4. Uh, this, there's something wrong with here. At 429 Great Road, Acton, anyhow. The applicant is proposing to construct a vehicle sales and vehicle service station building. The application and accompanying plans can be inspected at Town Hall during normal business hours. Now, Katie, you're, I understand you're the assigned selectman. Correct. I will defer to you to sort of <laughs> introduce everybody, run the discussion, sure. and all that. Sure. Thanks. Um, Okay, well, this is just to orient everybody where the former Pegasus Tack shop was on Route 2A in sort of Northeast Acton. Um, and the proposal is from Leo Bertolami to build a, um, as, as the uh, um, notice said, a um, car service and uh, sales facility. facility. Thank you. <laughs> um, so it's fairly straightforward. Um, site plan and um, I will turn it over to Mr. Bertolami and um, I'm going to go with George because your last George name's tough. Four, <laughs> no problem. George, George Democracus from Stamsky and McNary on this uh, site plan uh, submittal. Uh, the proposal is for, uh, well, the removal of the old Pegasus uh, structure which I think just happened you know, today, but um, it was in such disrepair that it virtually took itself down. Uh, so the proposal is for a roughly 8,800 square foot new building and um, associated driveway and parking. Um, on this aerial photo here, you'll see the new building 
is the brown and the proposed driveway is in gray here and let me orient you to you know there's a little uh, strip mall that has uh, color works and um, uh, act and dry clean dry cleaners here across the way there's the day spa calico here um, workers credit union up there and of course this is great road and Harris Street runs way behind here so we're right in this strangely shaped lot there This is just the representation of the existing condition uh, where the building was here. There were two existing curb cuts. This was the parking area. And as we get a little bit closer here, again, great road running along here. This is the driveway for the small strip mall next door. Um, the former building location was there very close to the street and this actually went before Board of Appeals and um, got relief for the front yard setback but it's actually set back further than the previous building so it's actually an improvement over where the previous building was with respect to the streetscape um, the driveway entrance is now here as opposed to where it was there and this is essentially a driveway enter the site there's the service entrance here for getting cars service but then the parking is actually beneath the building all the way around here and it's a very constrained site with respect to setbacks and other things um, there's actually a limitation on the maximum number of parking spaces that we can have which is 16 so it's by default because it's in limited business it's a fairly modest proposal uh, when compared to some other zoning districts in town. So all of those parking spaces are contained within or beneath the building, including the handicap space and bicycle parking. And then there's an elevator and stairs within the building. If you're interested in some of the data, there, the data is on uh, sheet four of six, which is the land use table. It talks about compliance with open space and parking, floor area ratio, and all that sort of thing. But it also shows clearly where the parking spaces are aligned here. Um, there's a loading spot back here behind the building, a dumpster location here, um, and again, the entrance to the service bays is here. Um, naturally the site plan submittal went before the various town staff and uh, departments and um, there were a number of comments um, engineering uh, I spoke with Paul where we had some discussion about some drainage issues which we can work out and resolve pretty easily uh, there was some uh, indication from DRB uh, to that they didn't like um, the amount of exposed concrete along the street side of the building so this is actually a new accurate representation of what will be there and you can see this is the, the facade of the building this is the first floor level here and the finished grade there will be brought up uh, to be in line with recommendation of planning to keep the grade within two to two and a half feet of the first floor so that you don't have a, a large uh, exposed concrete uh, foundation in the front um, um, otherwise uh, we naturally prepared lighting plans and uh, met all the necessary requirements uh, this landscape plan um, showing fairly dense buffer of vegetation in the back there and of course wherever there can be plantings there are this is um, the area where the apartments are on Harris Street so it makes sense to have that densely planted there everything else 
is essentially commercial around it. But, um, the plan has also received a Board of Health approval of the septic system. Um, and that's about it. Uh, anyone has this? Did I miss anything, Katie? No, I think that's about it. The only thing um, we, when we spoke uh, last week, I, I asked about kind of what um, proposed, you know, if there's a specific dealership or anything, and George indicated that there wasn't a specific dealership at the time, um, but that you were hoping to do, um, but that you'd be coming back uh, once you had figured out exactly what you wanted to sell there for, a, um, for the license or permit to do that from us as well. So that would be before us. Uh, I think it would make more sense right. to come back for the licenses right. that we actually knew it was going right. to go on, you know. rather yep. than to go for the license with a shell. Now that could be as quick as 30 to 45 days, or it could be four or five months, but right. it'll be before 1231 of 16. Right. So that's Because it takes so much time to, to process everything this. everything ready, yeah, yeah. Um, so just so everybody knew that. Um, but otherwise, are there any questions from members of the board? Franny. Um, so I just want to clarify the DRB comments. They were dealt with. I was reading the list of DRB comments, and there were a couple that I just wanted to make, that concerned me, and I just wanted to make sure that I couldn't tell from the date. So what you're showing us now reflects changes that you made after they made it's, the it's, design review board. Yes, it is. It's our changes in response to the design review board's comments. We didn't make all of them, but there was that particular front show the retaining walls properly, you know, show the grade such that there's not a lot of concrete showing. We did what we could. We did go back to them after their comments, which okay. was last Wednesday. Yeah, I brought the architect yeah. last Wednesday yeah. and we had a meeting. They could not vote though because right. they didn't have a quorum. So we, the, the, the members listened. We said we'd uh, drop that facade to about two and a half feet of concrete showing and we'd drop them off a set of plans after the fact. They know that uh, so they could just have fun file to look at. If they have any problems, I'm sure they'll give us a call and we'll try to get worked up. But it's what they wanted, the two and a half feet, so that, that's what we did. The, the, the one that sounded concerning to me was about the only one entrance into the garage? Yes, and that was added, actually. Good. That was a oh. good observation. There was a secondary, there's now a secondary egress oh, okay. shown on the plan. Yeah. Okay. And so I was picturing it. I meant to go there beforehand to look at it, but I wouldn't see anything. So. <laughs> right. So, That's right. Um, <laughs> so, um, so it's good I didn't. Um, I mean, I know the building and I know the area, but I just wanted to make sure you weren't just entering a garage, but it looks like you don't. It looks like right. you go through the parking lot before you Right, you, you go through and then gently descend behind the building and go into the garage. The fact of the matter is there's a septic system that has to go in next to the building, so it, in fact, sets the height of the building, not just that there's a garage there. So it wouldn't really change even without the garage. So okay. We're pretty constrained, like I said. Um, okay, is it, I guess I would want to make sure that they are be approved after, since they didn't have a Absolutely. quorum, that yeah. they before you went to the next stage, but I don't know if we can. Well, DOB is it. just an advisory board, so I realize they don't that. have approval authority. But, so but I, I, I want to make sure that they also have some comments about a uh, follow-up okay. that meeting from but last week. Okay, but I, I have noticed from being on an advisory board for years on transportation advisory committee, it was frustrating. We would spend all this time looking at a plan and putting in our comments, and to so I. I, I see what you're saying that we can look at their comments and just see right. that they're done. I just want to make sure that they are listened to. I mean, since they are advisory to us, I want them to be listened right. to. And I'm not capable of following the exact between the engineers and the architects on DRB and the engineers here. They all can tell if it was complied with or responded to better than I can. So. so, right, my point is we can't require them to comply with suggestions from DRB, but it's also, unless they're things that are under the zoning bylaw, we really can't require that anyways, even if we wanted to, but we can require that they go back to the DRB to consult with them, and um, when I spoke to George, and as he indicated tonight, they are willing to do that, so we can ask that they go back to it, but not that they're 
that they have to get their approval on a design. Okay. Okay. Janet, no. questions? Yeah. Well, since since you brought up DRBI, I thought I, I, I should address it. I was going to address it anyway because I did get feedback. Uh, the chairman was on vacation, um, and so they were a little bit under their usual number there. And plus then uh, for this particular project, one of the people who was present had to recuse herself because she's a tenant. Um, of yours, Mr. Burn, one of your companies. I don't know which one it is, but right. anyhow, I think our <laughs> office is located in some property that you own. So, so that left them with sub quorum, and they really could not have. They could make comments, but they couldn't weigh in officially. They did submit uh, an earlier set of comments, which basically are similar to what they told me. Um, informally which is that they're a little bit confused about what's going on in the site i think that it would be helpful if you're willing uh, uh, either as a condition of our approval or before we actually approve to go back and have just discuss with them fully uh, the the issue with the just clearly explain to them that you've dealt with the whole concern about the foundation janet we showed them two two and a half feet of what was in the foundation and as george does say the septic system determines the height of the structure so there's no more than two two and a half feet of concrete showing which most of our homes here there, in Acton there, there are other concerns okay. their, their other concern was about the basement now I I don't understand I haven't looked at the, the plans closely honestly when you're looking on a laptop that has a screen like this this stuff doesn't really show up very clearly but I gather that you said the parking is going to be underneath the building is that what the basement level is for yes for the parking which Correct. is why it's fairly low they were talking about the height of the ceiling and they were wondering what it was for it wasn't clear to them what the and, and these are people who look at plans so you we've know I don't had, we've had at least three meetings with the design review board two of them staffed with architects and engineers and myself uh, no I think I you've think had I, you've had I, I as far as I can tell you've had what one no we've had, you've had two yeah. okay two to three Manny and I the architect were there last Wednesday night well, well last, last week quorum. last week doesn't count because it wasn't a quorum I know but I told them I would bring them plans within a week of their next hearing showing two to two and a half feet of foundation exposed on that building and that's the way it's drawn and that's the way we intend to build it and once again not to be repetitive the septic septic system judges the height of everything on that building it's just it's kind of a very difficult lot it's because you yeah you need to have a septic system of course this is this is where we get into the issue of where we could use uh, we could use sewering but you know we, that's that's a whole different headache you know there are a lot of places that could use sewering that you know commercial areas that could use sewering and it would relieve a, a lot of burden on, on developing septic systems that that can accommodate the, the limited space the other thing the only other thing that the DRB brought up was um, in their original opinion which I don't know if the design that you were talking about that gets rid of the foundation uh, is after geez this is I think this is April 15th this plan yes I, and I don't know if there's a revision I you know I my eyes aren't that good even with these glasses so um, but it looks as if the front is is you know doesn't have foundation although it's yeah. I, who knows it's very faint and then and then let me let me yeah let yeah. me describe what's going on there so <clears throat> so what what you have is a plan that did not represent the what was really in front of the building and that okay. was one of their comments that grade Plane that you're seeing in front of the building was not representative so now here you see that the group, there's a retaining wall here and there's one here and there's a modification to what the grading plan showed to okay. minimize the foundation so it is updated from what you're looking at and from what now they informally on Wednesday saw they saw but yeah. the new plan correct yes and, um, and I told them I'd bring them another set. Yeah, I think I think that they probably what they would like to do is because they had didn't have a quorum. I mean, they weren't able to give you, uh, you know, the stamp of approval or whatever uh, officially. And you know, we're not we're not architects, uh, engineers, and you know, we kind of well, I do. I, I rely on them and others, the planning department as well, uh, to. 
kind of confirm that everything is as it's supposed to be. Um, and well, okay. so well, yeah, it would may, I mean, it certainly, it, it happens that they're, they're my liaison committee and I like to support them, but, right. and, and, but it's also that they have actually done been doing a very good job. Yes, they're an advisory board. We have a number of advisory boards. Some of them are are better than others, and and they're one of the ones that started out um, maybe not being as strong, but they built their credibility, and now they actually you know they have a good team in place, pretty strong, and it would be nice to keep them you know engaged by you know, actually considering their advice uh, and not just saying, well, they're advisory and we don't have to listen to them. So it would be great if you were willing to go back uh, with the revised plans and just, you know, talk through, yeah. make them understand the changes in this, which is apparently what they, they have otherwise seen. Well, right? it, just in fairness to the applicant, um, I think, well, we went before them twice with the ZBA and yeah. they got a review of the plan after that and now we attempted to go on Wednesday and the application has been you know in the books since April 22nd um, we were hoping to if anything um, get something like a, a recommendation that we go back and present the plan to them but beyond the scope of this hearing so that we can incorporate it's not that we we incorporated everything we, we think that we could have in the plan as we have it now. Um, the secondary egress, raising the grade in front. Initially, we're missing a whole pro process of uh, when we did go to them to develop the plans before we even filed for site plan. Mm -hmm. So we've been through, uh, not arduous, but um, a, a definite you know, process with them. and. You'll, will, you know, rarely will anyone do everything that the DRB mm -hmm. wants to do, but I do think we made a real concerted effort to get as close as we can, and we're still willing to go back and, you know, show them that it's improved, and ex you know we can explain to them that the septic system does drive the condition, and we can't just eliminate it and all of that sort of thing. But, so we're still willing to talk to them. We're hoping that we can move the process. But you, you don't want it to hang up in, our, in our decision making. Not for nothing. This has been through the planning director, the assistant town planner, on two different occasions. And then the new assistant town planner wrote the letter, been through the engineering department, Board of Health, and every department which is site plan orientated, and there are no problems. We made sure of that. So, design review board, and I think it's more than three times now, because I forgot about the Board of Appeals with the crazy setback with that building on town property or whatever it was. I think it was eight inches on, over closest to the road on, the, on town land or something. I feel as if this project has been around for a while. <laughs> it started, so, I mean, um, maybe last year like or something, yeah. Your nod. I said that I would bring the plans back to them, and you know, if they want me to come back for another meeting after that, but I don't need to bring uh, an engineer and an architect and go for my fifth or sixth meeting with the design review board, especially if there's no comment from staff. And I think you can understand where I'm coming, nothing disrespectful, because I will go back, but if everything looks good, which I think it does, we'd really like to have your blessing tonight as the board of selectmen. Well, what town staff, town st those, you know, I know that we, we have a reputation sometimes for not being very um, applicant friendly because we have all these approval processes, these different departments and committees, but, you know, the, the department people uh, perform, they have different distinct roles and, and, and uh, areas of authority or, or expertise. And uh, the design review board came into existence because people felt that um, there was, that was an aspect of, building that was not really taken into consideration and accounted for the fact that uh, some of our commercial development was not had not been done very attractively and yeah. and uh, you know they're actually you, they, they, who knows if you've been before them I didn't realize that you had been to see them as part of the Zoning Board of Appeals process, but um, presumably uh, you've, you've actually taken some of their advice to heart, so you probably have a better project than you started out with. Um, so in, in my experience, that's, you know. No, I, they're a nice yeah. board, they really are. No, it has um, nothing to do with being nice. It has to do well, with being, knowing what they're talking about. Yeah. So, um, but all right, I, I will keep that in mind. That's the only issue I wanted to bring up and, and 
you know, I'll see what I think we should do if we decide to close the hearing and make a decision. So, thanks. Are there other questions from board members? Okay, any questions from the audience? Okay, so my recommendation based on the um, comments from town staff, um, and you saw there's a draft um, uh, decision from the planning department in our packet as well my recommendation would be to close the hearing tonight in the past we have done this with the condition again that they go back to the drb um, for you know uh, to show them the plans and for consultation um, and i would recommend that again but not with any you know other further requirements um, so i don't know if other people have any comments or concerns with that i would second that that wasn't was a motion, a, but okay. Was a motion. <laughs> okay, so then first I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Second. You want me? You want me to do the whole vote and everything, or you want to take over? Vote? <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor of closing the hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. And then. We, we need to talk about what you want in the decision to the extent that it's the same as or different from uh, the draft that we have. Um, my only recommendation would be to um, include a, a condition that they, you know, bring the revised plans back to the DRB for consultation. Um, and I think that would address most of, I mean, the other staff comments, there were comments from the, um, water district um but they weren't anything that i think were things yeah. that wouldn't ha you know what wouldn't happen out you know that that are i mean they're required kind of outside of our process um and there were some comments from engineering about the uh, drainage calculations which are being addressed right. um And then they're just the typical, you know, um, conditions that are generally in our all of our decisions. From the no, I think I'm, that proposal for that one modification in the decision, or I, I can't find the decision. It's it, it's yeah, separated it's, from the packet. So if you go all the way to the end, it's another stapled oh, okay. piece. It's, you can have my copy if you want. Like yeah. Yep. That's what I thought. <laughs> You want I mine had too. it, you know, it just, uh, here, here. I've got <laughs> <laughs> dad, girl, Janet, it's just like, um, cause I don't remember, uh, what was said in here about, um, was there anything about going back to the DRB? Or? There's nothing in here currently okay. about that. No. So we'd have to add it as a condition. Um, and then Robert can just redraft it. And I mean, Peter's not here to sign it tonight anyway, so. And I don't know where we want to stick it, but uh, um, probably under, you know five point ten or so. You know five point just whatever. stick it in you know chronological order. Okay. Yeah. So there's just, two five point uh, nines so far. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, five point ten. Five, yeah. yeah. So probably five point eleven or what you know whatever. Um, so we, we or we could just it. say you know added to the list of conditions a condition that they bring plans back to the design with the DRB and consult with the DRB with, you know about the revised plans that are addressing the DRB's yeah concerns so that's fine okay okay so I will make a motion to um, approve the decision as drafted by the planning department presented before us tonight with the addition of a condition that the applicant bring revised plans back to the design review board to consult with them um, about the revisions. I'll second if nobody else is going to second. <laughs> I don't know if that's kosher. Okay. Is there any further discussion? This is very weird. I've never known where to cut off, you know, when you defer to the, the assigned selection yeah. and then when you <laughs> take fine. it back. I mean, usually I think the, the chairman kind of manages if there's the a, a rowdy crowd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to do. Uh, but anyhow, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion as read and seconded, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Thank you.
we just killed a billion trees with this stack of paper. All right. All right. Uh, we still have 20 minutes before our next appointment. So, Mr. Manager, do you want to talk about electrical, electric aggregation? Do we have time to talk about that? Do we have time to talk about Absolutely. electric ag I'll, aggregation? I hope so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, well, as, as the board uh, knows, back in at the annual town meeting in April, uh, town meeting accepted the statute that allowed uh, the town to uh, go out for electric aggregation and, in essence, try to uh, save our uh, residents and, and businesses some, uh, uh, some money in terms of their electric bill. And basically, how the process works in Massachusetts, there are three firms that, uh, three consulting firms, who uh, work with communities, uh, part of the requirement of, um, of uh, uh, going through electric aggregation is we have to develop an aggregation plan that has to be approved by uh, the Department of Public Utilities. And then once that happens, then uh, we're allowed to go out to bid to try to procure energy at a, at a discounted rate. So several things that the consulting firm will do is one, work us with us and, and basically walk through the regulatory process with us to uh, put out the bids, help us analyze the bids, and, and three, do a lot of outreach, both, uh, you know, for uh, uh, the community because it's, it is very confusing. It's an opt-out situation, um, and there are a lot of private entities that, that uh, 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 do robocalls to, to folks saying they can do this type of thing too. So. There's a lot of education that that's that's a key uh, a key component of it. So um, on May 11th and 18th, I, I put together a a review committee to uh, interview the three firms that do the uh, this type of thing in Massachusetts. And the committee consisted of Mary Smith, um, who is on the Green Advisory Board and also uh, uh, procures energy for Harvard University. Steve Long uh, from uh, uh, Green Acton a private group also was on the um, on the group. Uh, Andrea Ristine, the uh, um, municipal property superintendent, and uh, uh, Matt Selby, our land use economic development director, and myself. So, uh, as I said, we spent uh, May 11th and 18th interviewing the three firms, uh, and then just last Wednesday evening we got together, uh, compared our notes. I had checked references on all three firms talked to town managers that I knew that had utilized the the firms um, uh, of all, all, all three companies. Uh, and, I, and I think the interesting thing is that uh, all of them are uh, all very good. They're all um, very competent, it, it, almost to a situation of, of, of flipping a coin. Uh, all the managers I talked to spoke highly of uh, whomever the firm was that represented the particular um, uh, uh, municipality that um, uh, they utilized um, we, we did our own scoring sheets and and interestingly enough the uh, the company and we had we had three companies and, and three companies are uh, uh, colonial power group um, good energy which is through the MAPC and uh, the peregrine energy group and as we did our own individual tally sheets and then we compared our own notes all five of us uh, ranked uh, Peregrine Energy Group, uh, the number one, uh, with uh, Colonial Power Group, number two, and uh, Good Energy through MAPC, number three. And I think there are a variety of reasons why we probably all individually felt uh, Peregrine was the best, best of the three. One, uh, the president of the company, um, Paul Gromer, is the former Massachusetts Commissioner of Energy Resources. So he knows, he knows the game. He knows the, the bureaucracy of going through DPU and things like that that we thought was, was certainly a high value. Uh, another person who, uh, who is part of their team is an individual named John Shortsleeve. And, and John, um, back in the 90s, was one of the leading uh, uh, proponents of municipalities Buying streetlights uh, from uh, from the uh, from the energy suppliers, which which we did. So uh, John has always been kind of on the cutting edge of of, of trying to save uh, costs and energy for for municipalities. And finally, uh, I think we we're very impressed with how they'd go about uh, doing their community outreach. And I 
uh, I think we're particularly struck with uh, their ability to do outreach to the non-English speaking community. Uh, uh, the woman who uh, is kind of their education outreach person actually had worked in Acton uh, with English as a second language and they have the ability to, to do flyers, uh, et cetera, in, 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 um, in Chinese, in Indian, or whatever we, we may need. Uh, because I, I think it's going to be a lot of outreach that will that will make or break this um, um, this program. So, uh, based on all that, uh, our recommendation would be uh, for the board to uh, direct myself as town manager to uh, negotiate a contract with uh, Peregrine Energy Group. I'm happy to answer any questions. I left my tally sheets downstairs, so if you really well, want to know, I'll go down and get them. <laughs> We have your any questions from the board, uh, Katie. The one question I had, I know we had um, when we were originally looking into this. I think we were, um, uh, you know, consulting with MAPC, and they were going off of what um, Good Energy does. And one of the things that they had spoken about was that you were that individuals would be able to. Um, determine the sort of green energy level um, you know that that they would select um, but it seemed to me from the presentation included in the packet from Peregrine that that's not the case here that it would just be selected by the town as one or is that not the case we would we would basically choose three options okay. for citizens that can uh, that'd be a default and then there'd okay. be one that maybe is partially green and one that's more than green and that's something okay. what, that we need to discuss with the board when we get to that point but all three firms uh, had that flexibility okay right? and so they there would still be options for right. individuals to say yes I want more exactly. or less green energy okay exactly. that was my only concern otherwise I mean, the, the only question we would have to talk to the board about is is What's if we're going to offer three options what proportionate yeah green right. options would we want to do and uh, you know, we, we'll kind of have to figure that out once uh, once we get the you know through the DPU stage and, and get ready sure. to go out to bid. Sure, um, that makes sense. Okay, all right, thank you. I th otherwise, I thought it looked good, and they look like a good um, company. And uh, spoke to one of the members offline just casually, and and he had mentioned that he thought they really stood out um, in their presentation as well. So, I think they'll be a good choice. Any other questions, from the board? Um, yeah, I had a follow-up question about the, the sort of the greenness and all that and the three choices. Like, is there, is there a certain, I don't, it sounds sort of like the, you know, the investment options you have for 401k plans, you know, where you, you there's a certain amount of individualization that can happen, um, but I assume that there's a limit too, that you have, must have to have a mass of people interested in one option in order for it to be viable i don't i don't really know how this works if you have three options to pick from we don't all end up in one option right right it, and um he, my understanding is well first of all the default would probably be just a non-green component but we the board can actually choose i mean you could the default rate actually could have some green components so i mean part of to answer your question we're really going to need to bring the consultant in and, and, yeah. and take some time at a meeting and discuss that because uh, there there are a lot of nuances and you know we don't want to overburden everybody with a whole mess of choices that you just get overwhelmed so yeah. I, I think you know one of the first basic discussions is whatever we consider the default if, if you don't opt for the other two choices is there a green component is there not they one of the consultants I can't remember what these guys or one of the other two said they they were working for a client that the default was 100% green and uh, uh, you know there's all those kind of options but I, I think the consultant needs to lay those out to the board and do you have any sense of when how long it will take before we're ready to you know actually roll this out and have people well, well the goal really would be out if they're not interested but the goal yeah. would be to have bids out uh, before let's say November um, so that uh, the rates could be locked in before the winter months which usually is the is the good thing. This last year was the anomaly where actually if you went out to bid in January, or February, it probably would have done pretty well. But um, that would be the goal. So uh, it, it takes. Uh, I mean, we're, they're going to have to work really quickly. It, yeah. it takes a couple of months to get through the DPU process, and then there's the whole public outreach, and uh, you know we're going to have to spend a lot of time with uh, uh, you know at the senior center and things like that because it is a. 
you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a different concept than what people are accustomed to. Yeah, and I guess obviously as part of the outreach, there are, people are going to want to have somebody say, tell me how much I'm going to save if I go with this option. And, and you know, they're going to have to look at their own bills and, and some people may have trouble doing right. that. And, figuring and, they, out. and they can always opt out anytime they want. It's not like, you know, it's not one and done. You can always opt right. out if you don't feel it's working for you. So. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? No? And, um, so you want us to move basically the last sentence in your memo. Correct. All right. I will make a motion to recommend that uh, to authorize the town manager to finalize a contract with Peregrine for electric aggregation consulting services. Just a second. For any seconds. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Done. And we still have to Okay, should we talk about special town meeting? We, we still have 8 o'clock. Um, it's 10 minutes away. Yep. Okay. Um, if you recall at the last meeting, uh, the board discussed um, bringing the issue of increasing the CPA surcharge to a fall town meeting, and then subsequently, if in fact it was approved at town meeting, bringing that matter to the annual town election in, in March of 2017. Um, we started to look at potential dates at the high school and it's getting exceedingly difficult. Uh, uh, they have a pretty pretty full dance card over, over, over the high school to the point where only a couple dates were really even doable at the auditorium um, and those were in November, one being the week of uh, the presidential election the other being the week of Thanksgiving, which we didn't think were real two great weeks to be having a town meeting. So that left us uh, looking at other choices, particularly the upper field house, which is, sounds like it, if in fact we want a town meeting and we want it in October, uh, that would probably be the best bet. And if you recall, I can't remember how long ago, six, seven years ago maybe, we did have a town meeting uh, that was primarily held up there, uh, the citizen petition that wanted to uh, lower taxes by using our reserves. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it certainly is doable. But part of the issue when we get into October, we, we run into both uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Uh, also, uh, middle school is having open house. And then the last couple of weeks of October, the town clerk, under some new changes in the law, has to stay open late to allow people to vote early if they want to vote early. So. It comes down to like two dates in October, unfortunately. Um, so one date is October 5th, uh, which is um, right after uh, Rosh Hashanah, I think. What day of the week is that? Uh, that is a Wednesday night. Unfortunately, if we go two nights, the 6th is the, is the middle school uh, thing. So it, it would kind of push us to... Uh, the following week, which would actually be the 13th. So that's kind of what we're down to, is October 5th and 13th for, for town meetings. Um, so I know it's kind of early, but um, my, my sense is if we're going to have a fall town meeting, we should probably call it now so we can make a reservation because uh, the whole fall we're down to like two days. And would you explain what, aside from, aside from uh, the CPA surcharge issue, would potentially be on the, the warrant. <laughs> right. Well, we'd, we'd probably have two other, um, uh, this is not county consent, but two other articles. Uh, one would be uh, we, we are accepting proposals for a lease for the senior center. Uh, June 16th is the deadline for filing uh, uh, the proposal. So uh, conceivably, we would have a warrant article to authorize a, a lease for the, uh, for the senior center. and. Uh, probably maybe some type of appropriation. And the other pieces are reported, I think, at the last meeting. We do have a tentative agreement on the fire contract. And uh, while the union hasn't ratified yet, I, uh, it, it's one of those issues where part of, part of that agreement would be the town uh, starting advanced life support paramedic service. We have to give uh, SMURA a six-month notice prior to the beginning of the next fiscal year. So if we wanted to get into paramedic service July 1 of 2017, we'd really kind of need to take action in, uh, to, uh, to ratify the contract 
in um, in this fall. So those are the three main issues. I mean, we have some other um, easements and sidewalk easements and stuff like that, which would probably be for consent. But the three biggies would be the CPC, CPC surcharge, the COA lease, and then the fire contract. And the fire contract, I, I know from when we were talking earlier, it's if you're calling a, a town meeting, you basically have to put it on whatever. That, that's, the part the, that's part of the agreement, yeah, correct. correct. If we were to call it. Um, all right, well, any comments? Comments from the board? Sounds reasonable. And it would be in the upper gym. It wouldn't. Okay. Anybody else? I kind of feel like. I kind of feel like it's a fairly light agenda, so I mean, is there a reason why we shouldn't just wait until fall to finish all that stuff up? You mean wait until April? Yeah, oh, sorry, spring. Yes, April. <laughs> <laughs> so again, with the fire contract that would allow us to go into ALS and give the notice to Smura, with the senior center lease, it would allow us to potentially enter into a lease at the beginning of the year. Um, and with the CPA um, surcharge issue, we have to put it on a ballot after it's brought up at town meeting. So if you wait until April, then you're then waiting for a very long time until another uh, statewide or townwide ballot, um, as opposed to being able to do it in a, in a more compact time. I mean, frame. so I understand there's some relevance to moving quickly on the um, on the on the fire contract um, and maybe on the senior center thing, but I don't really see the need to move extremely quickly on the CPA surcharge and I think that you know um, and I think that uh, I don't really see a huge pressing need for us to have another town meeting in October I mean we've been doing uh, a supreme amount of town meetings and I figure f and I feel that you know uh, we should avoid calling town meetings for light agendas you know when we just have can ha can put it on the annual town meeting and leave it there Especially since you know the CPA is a tax issue, so I'm going to say that I disagree with that, and I think that there are enough issues that have time. Try to work me into this. Somewhere. Sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Put my hand up, and then I just went for it. <laughs> Would you like to call on me? That's, that's fine, Ms. Green. Go ahead. <laughs> Finish what you were saying. Uh, yeah, I think that there are enough time pressing issues um, and I do think that the I'm, I don't think anybody's trying to rush into CPA but I think that there's a there is makes sense to have these the town meeting vote and the ballot vote be at you know times that are closer to each other rather than doing it in April and having to wait potentially a number of months until you can have it on the ballot um, you when you discuss it, I'm Wait, still speaking, when you discuss it at a, uh, <laughs> um, a town meeting and then be able to have a vote, you know, and not, not um, as many months away, um, it keeps the issue fresh in people's minds. Um, and I do think that the resolving the fire union contract in a timely manner is important. And I do think that um, resolving the senior center is going to be potentially of importance. And there are times, I understand that it's frustrating that we had a number of town meetings last year, but there are times when issues come up that we have to deal with them for a variety of reasons, um, some legal and, and some not within a, you know a certain time frame. And we've always been, we've been lately trying to move towards a two town meeting structure anyways and I think that this would keep it consistent with that um, idea and so I would recommend calling the town meeting on October 5th. Cheng Sung you had something to say? Uh, I just wanted to comment that the, dis the time difference between an October and a March ballot is fairly close to the time difference between a, um, a April and a November and ballot November. Uh, and so I don't really think that there's a huge uh, there wouldn't be a November ballot year. that year. So we're talking about an April and a March of the following year ballot. Oh, yeah, you're right, because it's November this year, right? That is true. The CPA ballot question can only be on the annual town election or a state election. It can't be a special town election. So if, if, it, uh, if we did the annual, if we annual town meeting took up the CPA, you're basically talking on the 11 months or so, or 11 and a half months, right? Franny, you have something? Well, I like moving ahead quicker people get so frustrated and i do too at the slow pace of town government and if we have a way to speed up some of these things um like the senior center and like um 
the, it, I can see with the CPA, I don't know if it comes into play, but there are a lot of big land purchases coming down the path. And if we can increase our income into CPA, I don't think it would hurt sooner than later. All right, it's my turn. Um, yeah, I, I really think that from our last meeting, Bob Evans's point that, you know, if you've got an item like the proposed increase in the surcharge, which is going to hit the taxpayers' pockets, uh, you really ought to have it on the annual town meeting when all the other big budget items are. Otherwise, we can move the school budget and the town budget to a special town meeting in the fall uh, and see how much that uh, pleases everybody. But I do have some concern, and, and I also have some concern about having you know the the senior center lease appropriation also uh, stuck in in fall town meeting for the same reason. I you know I just be a lease authorization. Um I think that with, I think we talked about this back before town meeting in April that there are some gift accounts that we could utilize to have an architectural uh, uh, look at whatever space there is and, and, and probably be bringing the appropriation to the to the spring town meeting. But in essence, would it authorize the lease? Okay. So well, that yeah. Okay. But I, I still do have um, some concern, and it's basically it's my underlying concern about the whole idea of increasing the surcharge. I, you know, I, I don't think it's a great deal for a town like Acton, uh, and, and the bulk of the extra funding that's going to be coming is going to be coming from doubling um, the hit on every taxpayer in, in town. Um, and, you know, I think that, I was just not that this is applicable to us because we don't have the kind of independent revenue source that Littleton has, but Littleton has obviously taken the the mixed approach to CPA where they have a chunk of money, I forget what the percentage is, one or one and a half percent going in as a surcharge and the balances they take out of general funds. And it depends on, you know, what the mood is, what the finances are. Uh, that was an option that the CPA study committee um, rejected because it didn't seem, we didn't have that kind of a funding source uh, to draw on. And um, But I am, what struck me when listening to the town, the town administrator for Littleton talking about that approach is that it gives, it gives a lot more control uh, to uh, the taxpayers, the, the voters at town meeting about how much money they want to spend uh, in a given year, whereas the surcharge, assuming it passes a town meeting and, and it also is approved on the ballot, it's there. You know, it's there and, it, and you, you pay it uh, unless you move out of town um, every, you know, whatever it is, with your quarterly bill. It, it shows up and even though it's a, it seems like a not consequential amount relative to the total tax bill, you take enough of those not consequential amounts and you aggregate them and it, it comes to get to be a substantial amount. Um, yeah, I understand, I, th I think that the CPA funding is, is a really wonderful thing, um, but I think that if our, we're using the bulk of our funds on land p purchases, this has been an issue that's been around for a while, we've got to figure out alternatives uh, to come up with the money um, and give you know, and give people a chance to, to vote on it every time. Um, that's, you know, that's where I'm, you know. Yes, Katie. But I appreciate those comments. I just don't think that this discussion tonight is about the CPA surcharge. And, uh, you know, I think it, people, we will get into that over the coming months and people will have differing opinions on the CPA surcharge. But I think the question tonight is whether or not we want to call a special town meeting in October. And again, my only point, I, I appreciate Bob's um, concerns with having something like that happen at annual town meeting. But again, I think that timing wise for something like this, it just makes a lot more sense to do it in the fall when you're not gonna have to wait for a town meeting vote in April and wait an entire another year where people are gonna forget about the issue um, to do it again and vote at it in March. We're gonna have to re-educate everybody on either side about what this means. Um, so it, it, again, it's not, this is not an issue that people will just be approving at town meeting. It's a two-step process. And so I think that voters will have more than ample opportunities to be heard on this issue. So I, I don't think we're here tonight to debate 
the CP surcharge, but rather about whether or not to call a town meeting. And I think that having at least those three issues for me is enough to necessitate an October town meeting. But I, I do think that the CPA surcharge is, is one of the driving reasons for even considering having a special town meeting. Um, I need to read this notice. I'm about five minutes late. The Acting Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on June 6, 2016 at 8 p.m. in the Francis Faulkner hearing room in Town Hall, 472 Main Street, Acton, for an order to show cause for an alleged over-service incident at Makaha Restaurant, 255 Great Road, Acton, Mass. The documentation may be inspected at Town Hall during normal business hours. Anyhow, we need to finish uh, this discussion um, you know I, I this is you know I mean the concern that I have is that the CPA surcharge is really kind of the big reason that we've been thinking about a special town meeting and and the fact is once well you know it'll happen in the fall and if town meeting special town meeting approves it in the fall then it goes on the ballot and there's sort of I, I you know I'm wondering if how much opportunity there is going to be for people to to who have res reservations about it to actually hear and ha and be heard but anyhow um, there's between now and October and between October and March for people to to do public outreach on both sides of this issues and just as a reminder I mean the board did vote to recommend the surcharge it was a split vote but this board is on record in support of that and again to me it's not whether we're we supporting that Warren article or, or anything tonight but are we calling a town meeting but it's just that yeah I, and I you know my and even if you're not supportive of the article that's a change you know it's not as though we're gonna have an October town meeting that means the CPA surcharge is passing it just means that that will be an article on the town meeting and we'll have plenty of time to, to debate that in the coming months well yeah the trouble is for me is that the the substance of the articles is bound up with with the idea of having calling a special town meeting so yeah I tend to not want to have a special town meeting where the driving uh, purpose is to is to really deal with the surcharge um, the other things are you know the the fire the fire contract um, you know it actually sounds to me more important uh, than the surcharge uh, because if we want to do this ALS and we have to give notice six months notice which means that in order to participate by what July of 2017 then then it, the timing is such that it would make sense for us to prove the contract in the fall okay I understand that whether the senior center uh, lease approval comes up okay that's fine that's that's sort of filler it may or may not come up but uh, it seems to me that the only reason we're talking it, because this came up when we were talking about the surcharge was we were talking about fall town meeting in connection with the CPA surcharge um, we had not had a discussion about fall town meeting up to that point about in connection with anything else because there was nothing else on the table for us at that time and so I think that the two are intertwined and yes Katie my last point again is just that being opposed to it doesn't mean that it shouldn't I get that that there's a need to you know that you're against that Warren article but it's gonna come up by the way and I guess being opposed to me being opposed to it doesn't mean it shouldn't be shouldn't necessitate an October town meeting and I think that you know there's it's not trying to set this up in a way so that this is a win but it's just setting it up in a way that's logical because I don't think making people wait an entire year to vote on an issue that they just voted on makes a lot of logical sense I think doing it in October and then March is just a lot more straightforward for voters and if we're talking about trying you know if Bob's point and other people's point is to try to make this most straightforward for voters to understand and be able to take action on then doing this this way to me is a lot more democratic than making people wait an entire year to vote on an issue that they voted on before well, why so not I, next October I mean I, I mean we could wait till 27 now, I, we October could, 27, but I guess I don't understand yeah. why we had a committee to discuss the issue they've come to a recommendation this board has voted support for it and I don't understand why we'd wait until October of 2017 when maybe we don't have any other issues to have a fall town meeting on and I think that you know at least we have a couple other things the fire contract to me being the most important there or most time sensitive that it it makes sense again I I'm fine with people being opposed to the CPA surcharge a lot of people will be but I just don't think that that should mean it automatically equate being opposed to an October town meeting well okay I, I think that okay on the basis of the fire uh, you know 
sort of the whole fire reunion issue I'm, I'm willing to to vote in support of call just calling a, a special town meeting with the understanding that what happens between now and then um, is anyone's guess and maybe it won't happen um, right. That's fine. so but we what we do have to take care uh, about is that people don't start showing up and saying oh we want to throw this into the mix and then we end up with a fall town meeting that's almost as burdensome as as the annual town meeting so anyhow but all right so does somebody does somebody want to make a motion I think we have a constituent audience member. yes said mr <laughs> go ahead Very <laughs> I was trying to be formal as Sid Levitt of Minot Avenue I think I'm sort of active in the senior center and I think all the seniors are kind of expecting the town meeting assuming that you have a, a possible lease you may not but if you have that, we're all expecting that and would be quite disappointed if you don't have that town meeting and discuss the senior center. Thank you. Thank you. All right, does somebody want to make a motion? All right, I'll move to call a town meeting for a special town meeting for October 5th, 2016. One second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay abstentions okay all right now now to uh, the hearing I've already read the notice and um, I just want to make a few comments you folks could set up at the microphones um, I just wanted to make a few introductory uh, remarks to just provide context uh, this is unusual this hearing because it pertains to an incident that occurred over a year ago in March of 2015 but it's one about which the Board of Selectmen learned only recently, basically after the Concord District Court proceeding concluded. Um, I want to make clear that in scheduling this hearing, the Selectmen aren't piling on. Uh, the Chairman and I agreed that a hearing was necessary given the Selectmen's responsibility for acting in the public's interest, including on matters of safety, and given the particular facts, a multi-car collision and injuries to a passenger that required a visit to Emerson, which are precisely the risks that we as selectmen and the local licensing authority are trying to prevent. Scheduling a hearing was our only responsible choice as public officials. First, to secure information not already in the meeting packet, such as any receipts or statements from the licensee. And second, to ensure that the incident, investigative reports, and other information is preserved in the Board of Selectmen records. Uh, video equipment, as I understand it, was not installed at the time of the incident, so there's no recording to review, but if there are drink receipts, which uh, the police department asked the licensee about immediately after the incident to retain, we'll be able to at least see those. Um, the licensee, I, I would add finally, has been before the selectmen since the time of this incident on unrelated matters, and the selectmen have been able to see video recordings and also received assurances from the licensee and council about the videotaping system and the provision of proper training to servers. So I see this hearing as an opportunity to gather more information for the record and not to lecture <laughs> and the like. So, so, gentlemen, I will turn it over to you to introduce yourselves and to provide an overview. One of the things I would request, because I was looking at the, the, the file, was that you translate into English. Uh, the, the court, the Concord District Court's sort of summary of what was going on because a lot of letters that <laughs> meant nothing and all I could see is maybe April of this year was the end of at least this stage of it and until sometime next year, so great. Certainly, good evening. <clears throat> Deputy Chief Rich Burrows, uh, with us tonight is Detective uh, Fred Brenchler, who's our prosecutor, and we also have uh, Officer Doug Mahoney here. The officer who wrote the initial report, uh, Matt Hammer, is on vacation out of state. Uh, officer Mahoney was his field training officer that night, so he was with him and can testify to everything that was, was there. Uh, the plan is to have officer, uh, Detective Rentschler go through the, just the facts of the case, and then if there's any questions, we have uh, Officer Mahoney if, if needed. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Um, thank you. Uh, on Wednesday, March 4th of 2015, as the board is aware, the Acton Police were called to a motor vehicle accident at eight, uh, excuse me, at 6.34 in the evening. Officer Hammer was dispatched as well as Officer Mahoney to the uh, crash. It was Officer Hammer's report that we're working off of. As Officer Hammer investigated the crash further, it became apparent that the accident was caused by a subject rear-ending rear one vehicle, and then that vehicle was in turn forced into the vehicle in front of it, three-car kind of accordion-type accident. 
The officer found the subject responsible for the accident still seated in his motor vehicle. The officer then noted that the subject had a strong odor of alcohol as he spoke and that his, his speech was slurred, his eyes were bloodshot and glassy. And due to the severity of the crash, as the board already knows, one of the occupants of the other vehicles was transported to Emerson Hospital by act and fire. While that was going on, uh, the fire was attending to the other parties of the accident. Officer Hammer began um, his field sobriety tests of the uh, operator of the motor. Sorry, vehicle. can I interrupt? I just realized that we're supposed to get witnesses sworn. Clerk? Oh, that's me. Yes, you're supposed to swear. You, you, I've never been you know, do like, do like TV before. and just swear I in the Lisa. Um, witness I you know I just sitting here and I thought oh there's something missing yeah so I don't have the wording of what you don't just say ask. do you swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and you can add God or not but um. do you swear to tell the <laughs> well truth? For, first of all I don't think detective Venture's a, a witness <laughs> so I don't think he needs to be sworn but, in, need, but whoever, I think anybody whoever's else gonna be, be yeah okay do you swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth Thank you. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure so we don't. Not a problem. Would you like uh, Would you like me to start over or? No, that's all right. I, I, all right. It's technically imperfect, but it will do. <laughs> Very good. So the officer, uh, Officer Hammer, uh, again noted, uh, made observations about uh, the subject operating the vehicle, uh, exhibited exhibited signs of alcohol consumption. The officer then uh, had the uh, subject perform a series of field sobriety tests. Um, the test included a one-legged stand test, a nine-step walk-and-turn test, and a counting backwards exercise. As a result of the uh, test that the officer administered on the subject, Officer Hammer formed the opinion that the subject was intoxicated and placed him under arrest. The subject was transported back to the Acton PD, where he was given to take an op uh, or was given the opportunity to take a breath test. The, the subject did consent to taking a breath breathalyzer and he scored readings of 0.11 and 0.11 respectively, which made it a valid test. As a result, um, he was charged at the Concord District Court with the offense of operating under the influence of liquor. Fast forward to April 6th of this year, the subject uh, did plea out to a continuance without a finding at the Concord District Court. As a result of making that plea, facts similar to what I've just read to you are read to the court, and at the conclusion of the plea, the judge then asked the defendant several questions as part of uh, giving the plea. And under oath, when asked where did he have his last drink, the docket that you have is kind of convoluted, but it does reflect he had his last drink at the Bacaha, and that's essentially why we're here. Thank you. Um, are there any questions at this point from board members? Okay. Um, I don't know if at this point we should hear from the applicant or, I mean, uh, the licensee or if, or, or maybe officer, do you have something to add to the version that we've just, we've just heard? So, so just so that I can clarify, the first that we heard the reference to the restaurant was in April. This is the first we knew of of that Makaha was involved because I, I thought that there was a reference in the original report um, that that led led somebody to go to the restaurant to ask them to preserve the the receipts or whatever and that night during the course of the investigation they asked him where he was drinking and he stated at the Makaha that night which led us to um, have Lieutenant Kogan <clears throat> went over to the Makaha to make notification that the incident did occur and to preserve and save any any other okay. rel relative to that incident okay okay because that I mean that it's my understanding I mean one of the reasons another reason we called the hearing was because in order to get the receipts uh, you know we had to do it in in the context of a hearing um, but there's absolutely no other information uh, that documentary information I think that we can get other than the police reports so yeah because uh, that, that was a subject of some discussion as to whether to do to call even have a hearing or not but but given the the extent of the, the well the accident and the injuries we decided that it was the only appropriate thing to do so all right did you Franny did you have a yeah, question I'm a little confused about the, what the purpose of this hearing is I mean sometimes we think about um, when we hear of these things happening we 
we suspend their license for a period of time or something like that? And you sound by thinking about not having a hearing that this is different because it was before those other things we talked about and before the taping system was in there? Or what is the purpose, is my question. And also, why didn't we hear about it? Why can't we hear about it? Why, through all those discussions we had, like we've had Makaha in front of us, right? Yeah. And nobody ever said, oh, by the way, this year, March 5th, um, somebody apparently had had their last drink before causing an accident. So that's another question I have. The purpose of tonight and also uh, why? Well, the pur I mean, the purpose of tonight is it's like any hearing. It's for us to conduct our own investigation of what happened because we issue uh, liquor licenses and we're responsible for making sure that the licensees are acting responsibly. That's really uh, what the purpose of our, our having any hearing. I think that, though, in this instance, um, you know, to some extent, our ability to do that is compromised because um, the incident is so old, and and you know, frankly, there's no video, and so the only information that we have, other than the police reports and any any witnesses that happened to be around and and were and wrote sworn statements at the time, you know, contemporaneous statements, is is the receipts. Um, but it's it's really because of the fact that. Since then, we've had we we've, we've had the restaurant before us on other matters, and we came to terms about okay, the recording equipment and the training of the servers. You know, this is this is something that probably ideally should have happened a while ago, and and so I don't want to sort of belabor the issue by by sort of going over the stuff that we've gone over, say last year when we had a hearing. Because what happened is a more serious, it's exactly the kind of thing that we, we don't want to have happen, uh, but we've already issued warnings about other uh, things that have come up involving the same licensee. Why didn't anybody say that at I, those that, times? That I don't understand. I don't, it, it has something to do with the, the process, the... Um, reporting pro process and and you know I don't know if it's that you want it to make its way through the criminal court system a bit before we start opening our own investigation or hearing about the matter as of the night in question the subject was uh, suspected of operating on the influence and he was criminally charged but he's innocent until proven guilty so until there's a plea or a guilty finding it, it, there's no guilty um, and upon either a guilty finding or admission, admission of sufficient facts that's when there's the 9024N or J that kicks in as to where they had their last drink to confirm that. And, and that's where, I mean, if, if there was no violation, then technically then it's questionable that you have a service violation because there was no traffic moving violation that um, was caused by a serving violation. I mean, they're sort of linked together, so, okay. And in this, was this unusually long? Um, <laughs> it just this is typical it takes it takes a year to short answer yes long answer if you have five minutes I can explain the whole statewide breathalyzer Drager controversy this case fell into something that was outside of our breathalyzer machine but affected all the breathalyzer machines in the state this test was administered during a time period where there was a discrepancy in the uh, simulator solution operators were not catching that the simulator was giving a wrong number and the mm. machine counted mm. a valid test when in fact it wasn't it was just an operator error but it was a software glitch so all the machines in the state during this period of time all those breath tests were carved out and all those OUIs stemming from those machines or that time period they were just kind of put in a shelf and slowly some of the uh, offenders are playing out and others are still fighting the technicalities of the machine so that's the long answer so this was in that group so we were kind of stuck because we couldn't push it along. We had to wait for the uh, defendant to make their own choice. So did they resolve the problem with the machine? So it, it was a two-month window, and it was a software matter of taking care of. Yes. Gosh, you know, you, you depend on c computerized stuff so much, and and when it doesn't work, it really messes things up. So, um, all right. Uh, are there any other questions or? Uh, so 
but in general, even though somebody's innocent until proven guilty, as soon as you know that there's an incident, you do gather the, any tapes or any information and talk to them in, in that information. You don't wait until they're proven guilty before you collect all that stuff, right? Correct. We notified them the next day, I believe, of the incident that took place the prior night. So, then can I ask, where did you receive any receipts from that evening? Uh, we have not received anything from them as of this time. Okay. Then I'd like to hear from the licensee. Just a reminder that we need to swear them in as well. One of the things I want to make clear, Franny, is, uh, you know, the, the Concord District Court process is for the driver. Um, you know, the guilt is the driver. Um, our, our process is completely different. We're not, um, we're not a criminal court and we're not dealing with, yeah. So I just wanted to make clear because uh, um, when, when they're, you're talking about they're getting information, they were talking about getting information from the restaurant, making sure the restaurant conserved the evidence. That's what I mean. I know the innocent until proven guilty is the person, but the, um, but gathering the information seems really important to get. But they don't actually gather, they just make sure that it's preserved. And that's why we, we oh, don't. you mean they don't take it into their hands? No, they just tell them if, to hold on If they on had it, we would have a hearing. It, but we, we okay. don't have it until we have a hearing. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, well, while you, uh, I see representatives of the licensee up here, um, uh, maybe you could swear him hey, how are you, as well. Um, Raymond Chang, Makaha restaurant um, manager and uh, owner. I'll swear uh, you, I mean, I'll, um, yeah, everything. Are, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth. Okay, um, um, okay, before I start, I just want you to know um, this incident occurred like over 15, mon 15 months ago. Mm -hmm. And after that, we have two incidents. I don't know if you remember, one was a lady. We also saw the video, you know, she was having a, okay. And the other one was a, uh, a subject was pulled over near the uh, subway on, on, uh, on Great Road. And that incident, I was immediately bringing it here. And I also saw the video that he left an hour ago from my restaurant with the takeout. And then another hour later, he got pulled over with a white back takeout. I, I, I think, you know, I don't know if you remember that. Okay, so why is that incident bring to the court, bring to the hearing two weeks after, and this one doesn't? That's why I don't understand too. And um, another, another thing is, um, ever since what happened last year, we still keep our training and the meeting every, the last Sunday of every, every single month. We have, a, uh, we have a group meeting about how to serve or any troublemaker, we try to stop them from coming in. We have that meeting too. And again, till today, we never have anything uh, violation after that incident. And I just want to you know, make sure you know, people understand our effort. And uh, what happened that day was a, um, it was a Wednesday around 2.30, three men came in. One of them is a regular. And, uh, they sat down and we talk and uh, the, the, regular, the regular man, who, who's, who's the one who's paying that bill? And he said, oh, this, is, um, this guy is a uh, Lemonster police officer. And three of them, they just sit down and eat and drink, you know, and things like that. The total of three people, they stay about two hours. Total drinks is eight Mai Tais and a whole bunch of food. By the time around 4 or 4 30 and uh, the regulars he uh, asked me can i leave the car here and i think i'm going i'm going to call my mom to give us a ride home because we thought we have a little bit more drinking so i said good you know you can leave the car anytime you want so moments later and his mom came and she did she sat, she sat there for a little you know maybe 10 20 minutes and they left together and her mom did not, his mom did not have any drink at all. And so that means, I mean, they, they are doing the right thing and I let them do, do it because the, uh, they have someone to drive them home safe. And right here,
and I don't want to say his name in the public because you can look at it. One of his name is, you know, he, he, I asked him to be here today as a, you know, testified. But too bad he having a, uh, a business trip in New York right now. But if you want to, I can, we can schedule for him to answer some question. He is the one paying the bill with uh, $106.95. And also his mom number was there too. You can, you can verify with that. And they have the business in Acton. And um, okay, this, that's not key. The key is if you look at the slip, the credit card slip, the time, the checkout, the payout is 1634 and on the on the police on the police letter that I I get two weeks ago and he say March 4 2015 and he get arrest or whatever accident occur 634. No, I, this is uh, very, I mean, this is the reason that I wanted to hold the hearing. It's one of the reasons that we have the hearing is also, you know, for, for the licensee to have an opportunity to present um, his, its, her side of the story. And, you know, it's precisely this kind of information that kind of creates a question as to, okay, because there is a time discrepancy. So, um, and you know it's always possible when you have somebody who gets stopped that that he's not being truthful when he's he's asked well where have you been drinking you know and something pops into mind and it may be just a convenient convenient name it may not be accurate so um but uh well they ate a lot of food <laughs> yeah they they yeah but they're they're you said they're they're three guys also, it's I three people and yeah they're guys, and they ate a lot of food, and they drank a number of Mai Tais, but it was in combination with the food, so. Um, all right, are there any questions for, yes, Brandy? Well, doesn't seem like that much food to me. Um, <laughs> but, but I do wonder, do you have, Evidence. I mean, or does this fit with anything that the mother actually drove away? They did. With they him? left together. So, so apparently, he must have come back later to get the car. The, that uh, I don't know. Like, that we don't know until the next day. I get the uh, the uh, notify from uh, Detective Cogan that uh, he gave. I, I wasn't there when he came. He just gave the name about this person. So we you know, we kind of figured out. You know, if some officer must be this party because that that night was slow again. And did, did the police? Do you have any information about that? I mean, to to piece this together. That I mean, to just show that it really was, they really did drive away, not in the car right after this. To, you know, to answer your question, I don't think I'm the. You know, what if, to drive them away safe? I think these two name here. It's a perfect answer to you guys. Right. You can, it, you it can, does, yeah, right, right. It shows right, it's right, two right, hours right. later. That's why, I mean, yeah, yeah. So. Because the mother drove everybody home. Right, so I. Just I, I, we assume, we, we did, I, I, did, I, did, I did not go out to the parking lot and check. They really, but that's what the gentleman asked me. Can I leave the car here for overnight? Because my mom is coming to give us a ride home. I said, right. perfect, perfect right. move. That's the last thing you know. I, I just wonder, process-wise, like why we can't get this information beforehand so that we don't have to go through a whole hearing. Um, but I don't know how these things work. Um, I, before I forget my question, um, one of the issues I see that makes it difficult for us is we don't know who the driver was. We don't have the identification. And I assume that you know, or you know at least the regular, you don't know I don't know if he's if this person is one of the regulars or if he's one of the other people. Um, you know, you presumably know at least one of the people who was of the three, right? Um, so we, what I don't know is whether there's any overlap between this these people and this. But it, okay, but 
uh, also another key is when they ask for the check, I don't see them visually. They are intoxicated. I don't see them at all. They 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 thought no one better than what they think. They think they they drink too much. That's why they call the ride. Mm -hmm. I and I absolutely give them a credit for that. And to serve someone like intoxicated have to be visually intoxicated. I mean, mm -hmm. we learned it from the ABCC, we learned it from the mm -hmm. TIPS program. But they all, came, they all came in one car. They came in one car that was left in your parking lot and then the mother came and drove all that, three of them. I, I, didn't, I can't recall because it's, I mean, I, I didn't even you you know, get know. a parking lot on that day, but you know, it's, it's been you a while. You don't know if, if one of them might have driven off in his own car. And, and might have been driver number driver I, number one. Yeah, that I can yeah, answer that, you. I mean, yeah. that's, that's sort of, you know, this, well, yeah, that's, this is an issue that we would have encountered even, even if we had dealt with this a year and a half ago, is because right. we don't have, it's all, everything is blanked out. So but my job, my job is keep, make sure everybody are safe, get out of my restaurant. All right, any other You questions? know, whatever they did after that, I have mm -hmm. no idea. Plus the time, the time left is, you know, what they, what they did after, the, in the two hours, I have no idea too. Chingson? Uh, can the police confirm whether or not the person arrested for operating under the influence was the person whose full name is listed on, on this sheet? It's a different person. It is a different person. Okay. And just to clarify, the person listed here was one of three people. So yeah. when they asked, I mean, he's one of the three people that was, you know, part, right. So it doesn't matter whether the name is here or not. I mean, to me, and to me, hold on. We're going to work on not speaking while other people are speaking. Um, to me, I think the, the, the reason that we call these hearings, Franny, and, and the reason we kind of have to do it this way is just sort of how the legal process works. And Raymond, again, I mean, we're frustrated. It took a year for all of this to happen. But, you know, as the detectives explained and the deputy chief explained, that's just unfortunately how it has to make its way through the court before we're allowed to do it. Um, fortunately, having this receipt, I think, clarifies we've run into these issues before where, um, you know, somebody had a drink and then an hour or a few hours later is in an accident or is pulled over and maybe this was the last you know restaurant or bar where they had a drink and so that's why they said that but they could have been drinking uh, you know at home afterwards or you know had something in their car or whatever we just don't know um, but this did incident this accident did take place two hours later um, and if they still had uh, the blood alcohol level that that they blew when when they were um, taken into custody we can assume that there was or presume that there was probably some drinking in between so um, to me I think it's you know clear that um, we can't make the assumption that there was any over service in in this case so um, you know again I uh, you know it's unfortunate and it, that there was this accident and these are the kinds of you know public uh, violations that we're, we're trying to avoid but to me I don't think there's any evidence that the uh, over service happened at the Makaha in in this case I think it's just unfortunately somebody that chose to maybe they didn't get behind a wheel drunk when they left that establishment but they did at some point um, and and that's an unfortunate fact, but I don't think the Makaha's fault in this in this particular case. And as you say, we we have since this incident occurred, we have encountered a case where um, the the time when the person was stopped and the time when the person was last drinking was big gap, and it, and it was sort of implausible unless the person was really hypersensitive to alcohol that that the person would have just gotten that blank faced <laughs> before being stopped so anyhow any other questions comments any questions from the audience I don't know if that's appropriate but you know anyhow yes sir if you're if you're here to say something in in defense of the restaurant or whatever you probably should be sworn in and identify yourself my name is Anthony Cardulo Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. It's uh, odd to be here again. 
Uh, Franny, I appreciate your candor in recognizing that this is not the first time that Raymond and his establishment have been brought in front of the council. It's unfortunate that we're here again discussing a case that's over a year old, 15 months old, and it is reminiscent of more persecution than prosecution. And as much as I understand the need to uphold public safety, uh, Ray has proven himself time and time again to have the exact same itinerary in his handling of alcohol-related incidents to the point that the ABCC, the statewide jurist, uh, body on this subject matter, has determined Ray to be not at fault in all previous matters. So to be here again and have the word again brought up, that word is beginning to lose its meaning here. Uh, we might as well treat this like a first-time thing because all the other things have been wiped clean. The problem I have is seeing Officer Mahoney here and our prosecutor and our deputy chief wasting their time. Officer Mahoney needs to keep our streets safe. Our prosecutor has cases to prosecute and our deputy chief, I'm sure, has better things to do than to discuss a 15-month-old case. Will there be more incidences of related alcohol in the town of Acton? I'm sure there will. But as you said, Franny, is there any way we can get this information beforehand to determine whether a hearing is relevant or not? I wholeheartedly support that initiative so we don't waste our policemen's time. We don't waste our business owners' time. And this council serves to uphold Acton businesses, uphold the interests of its citizens without appearing like a bunch of bullies just looking for a fight. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to make a motion to find no violation. Second. Second. Ching Sung second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Mr. Did you? Can, okay. Did you have a final statement or? Right. Can I, I, I know I'm here all the time just to, um, to answer all the question about, you know, what the problem is and, um, can I borrow, you know, like a couple minutes to say what, how I feel about the whole situation in the past two years? Yes. Okay, thank you. Before we vote on this issue, we're going to do this? Well, it's, it's pending. Let him finish, and then we'll finish okay. the, you know. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've been here for 20 years, and uh, I love the business. I enjoy, you know, the customer here. And uh, 20 years, I make more friends than anywhere. You know, I, I'm from Boston. and. I have more fans from Acton, more than any, anywhere. And the thing is, you know, I, um, I want to say something is like, a woman have family problem, and he end up at my restaurant having a chicken wing, and one sip, just one sip of alcohol. And I have to bring the lawyer here, I have to come here Monday night, it cost me $2,000. And the next accident was a man pulled over near the subway an hour later. And I saw the video and everything. I proved that he is, he, he, he's, he said he's from Macau having like four beers, I believe. But the video showed he only had two drinks. That night it cost me $2,000. And I tried, I, tried, I tried to stop a man from driving. I shot him off. I, I call a cab, I, I, uh, uh, he refused the cab, and I called the acting police to make sure this young man doesn't get into trouble because a young man lose a license like that is difficult for his whole life. Mm -hmm. And I, I think about that too. The thing is, it turned around. It cost me $15,000 to have a lawyer and four weeks lost liquor license for the revenues. And that's a lot of money. I have to sell a lot of poo-poo platter for that. And the thing is, I look at a lot of videos, hearing from the local restaurant, uh, liquor license holder along Greg Road. I, I, I watch a lot of that. And I think I get an unjust treatment. People like that, just like this, same thing here. The first, the first time I get $320 fine. Even I, have the pol even I have the state police officer to testify that it is not overserved from Macaha. I get $320, fine. And next time is someone walking down the street 
and I also have the the customer identify, uh, you know, come here testify that my bartender refused to serve him, and also an hour later, he's walking, and I get suspended license for three days. And the other restaurant, same thing, so the evidence, no fine, or 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 you or did say, let me say, I'm sorry to have you here. Have a good night. Not no fine, no nothing. And I tried to save a man's life and get my license revoked. And when I went, when we went to the okay, before that, during the hearing here, I remember you asked the chief, police chief was sitting right there. You asked him for the recommendation. What is the punish for Makaha? The chief say one week. And all of a sudden, I get a treatment revoked license. I just want you to know, is any scale of punishment from different people to different people? One week suspension to revoke the license. I mean, this is more like a two days in jail and the life penalty. And I still remember when we went to the ABCC hearing, the whole thing, the commissioner asked the town councillor, after you know, what I did, he asked the, the town councillor, what else you want Mr. Chen to do besides shutting off, call a camp, call the, call the police? What else you want Mr. Chen to do? And she goes speechless. She can answer that. So because of that, I lost so much money. And now I, I want to request this. If something happened like that, is it possible the chief or the town official look at the video before you bring me here, if, if the video show that I'm really guilty, overserved, things like that, I'm glad, you know, I'm here and get punishment. But if not, you look at the video, say, some subjects say they have like four or five Mai Tai, the last thing is a Makaha. But if the video show, I'm glad the video helped us a lot. If the video show he only had one drink and walked out of my bar safe, don't bring me here because it's cost me a lot of money to do that and cost me a lot of cost me an image on the paper too. And right now, even today, still people call in, are you serving liquor? You get your license back? Even today, honest you too. And just, you know, thank you for listening to me. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chen. I, I understand um, that this has been a very frustrating uh, period for you. Um, uh, and it's, it's probably scant comfort to you that uh, the vote to revoke your license was was a, a divided vote. Um, there were those of us who didn't agree with that. Um, I, I also think that uh, we have, I guess, in past year, tried to put together data on all of our our liquor license hearings, just sort of because I think I think it's important to have some continuity, you know, to have to not just do certain things for one one person or one owner and not for another. I mean, you need to have consistency. Um, otherwise, um, our credibility as the issuers of licenses will be undermined. And I think that you know that is that is something that you know we're I think that we're aware of um, in trying to sort of professionalize. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I I, I understand. Um, that you're frustrated, uh, you know. You, honestly, there are people I hear from who uh, who are customers of yours, people I know very well, and uh, they talk highly of your place. And and uh, yeah, they they um, they might not come here to, to testify, but you know, uh, but they. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. You, yeah. I'm glad you uh, so that. you do. Yeah. And. and so if, for, for what it's worth, you do seem to have, you do, as you say, you seem to have friends in town and, and some of them actually are willing to come here and, and support you. So, um, but I think that based on, I think what the developments of the last year, I think that we, we the, you have the recording system in place, you have the training in place um, and you know, I'm hopeful that going forward, uh, we won't, see you anymore, <laughs> except no, 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 if we no. go to your restaurant. Anything so, happened, yeah. I'm glad. I'm really, I mean, I respect the drinking law probably more than anybody else because I'm the legal license holder. I respect that. 
and I know people who walk out and get pulled over, I probably w won't see them again. I would love to have return customer. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't want them to go out and lose the license driving, and I never see them again. Mm -hmm. You know, I all. I always know return customer is the best advertise, and I always build on this on my business. So I just like you know, I, I respect the drinking law, and I I don't want to see any anybody get hurt. No, I just wanted you to know. That's, yeah. Thank you. Know, you. Thank one you for listening one to me. Yes, yeah. one of the thoughts I had, though, is, is with regard to our reliance on the say-so of the drivers who get pulled over, and then they say, where, you know, in response to the question, where were you drinking last, and they mention your restaurant or some mm -hmm. restaurant, and, and th that may or may not be uh, true. Um, and maybe, you know, having a little bit more verification on uh, of that information before it gets to the point where you're, we're pulling in restaurants um, to be questioned uh, would be helpful. So, but thank you. Thank, thank you, you very for much. sharing. Thank you. Yep. Katie. There's just one, I, I appreciate your comments and you know, I, I understand it's been a very frustrating process and I think it has been for all of us and none of us like any of the, these over service or alleged over service hearings that we have to go through. But there's one thing I want to clarify and that's your request that the police view the video beforehand and make a determination. But the problem is that we're the licensing authority and, and the police aren't. So they, you know, it's it's up to us, unfortunately, to be the ones to, to see that video and to make that determination. And I don't want to spend hours, I've spent I, hours in my life well, watching we have, people we have the time at a bar secure the and drink. And I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. None of us want to do that. But I think it is important to just understand that that is sort of the, the purpose of you know why we we have these hearings um, and so we do go off of you know, you know the chief's recommendation when he recommends to call this or not but but the viewing of the video and the seeing of the evidence unfortunately is really our role to to do that and so that's why we end up having to have the hearing to to make this determination and uh, you know again tonight we've had that hearing and it's clear there is no issue and we can make that determination um, and I think we do try to be consistent with with our various um, uh, different license holders in in town but I think that that is just something people seem to forget that we're the licensing authority and so we are the ones that have to legally have have the hearings and, and hear that evidence so that's the only point that I would make and I understand it's a very frustrating process I think it is for all of us but I just want that thank to you. be clear thank you very much so again there's a for any I, just, you, you, I keep thinking about you know isn't there some way to have more involvement of the police like we have police details for the side of the road you know it, is there a way we can somehow make the relationship between the bars where people are drinking and the police somehow more common and friendly I haven't figured it out but uh, it does make me think when you said you know when we're going by their word <laughs> and this is gonna sound crazy but maybe when somebody gets picked up and they're being driven away and they say the last place I was just drinking was Makaha or whatever maybe they should drive by on their way to the station <laughs> drive by and right then and there say can we see the receipt and that would be settled right then and there yeah, one thing I want to say is I really appreciate in the past, not, not the past year, in, uh, just like I said, I've been here for so many years. Uh, I have the police officer come in and say hello and, you know, things like that all the time, used to be. But in the past year, you know, maybe the relationship between Makaha and the town is, is really all well for, for them to come in. But I will be, I mean, I'm more than happy to see you know, people here come to the restaurant and, you know, see how we work out, how, how, how the, um, you know, our system is. Our system, our, our drinking law, I mean, our drinking system is no different to Nangon Park or the, the, any, any restaurant down the road. There's no difference. They come to my restaurant, they go to that, to go over there too. So this is the same customer we, we see every other day, every, every, you know, every other week, same people. So I, I, you know, I'm the mo more than happy to see you guys in my restaurant. I, this my, you know, from my heart. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank I think we've we've detained you long enough. So we have a motion and a second uh, to find no violation, right, or take no action, or whatever it find was that violation. you said. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyhow, any further discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Sure. Um, you want to, Mr. Mr. Chen? Mr. Chen, I just <laughs> wanted to say I appreciate that. I mean, I I feel for you in the in the stress that you must feel, knowing that there's always this fine line, and also, you know, I just appreciate having a lively business in town. So we do the best we can do. <laughs> Thanks. Have a nice. Good night. All right. So are we done? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Good night. <laughs>